Now, before we dive into pivot table, there is one more thing to be checked. And that is, is the data consistent in each column? We will start with the simple data with just four rows. But in real life, you will have thousands of rows and it is impractical to scroll all those rows to check whether there are any mistakes in them. In this video, we will see how to use pivot table as an audit tool to check quality of the input data. A two column table. I am just going to create a pivot table. Now, we will see pivot table in detail later, but whenever you drag drop something in values area, if it's a number, it calculates it. So in this case, it summed up all the four numbers. Now we know that there are numbers in the second column as well. But when I drag and drop this column, it does a count. So many people get confused as to why does pivot table behave differently when I know that both the columns have the same kind of data. But now you will notice the difference. In amount 2 column, there is one cell which is empty. That means it is not numeric type. Whenever Excel is trying to calculate things in the value area, it goes to the entire column and checks whether all the cells have numbers in them. Even if a single cell is not a number, it could be empty text or something else, then it resorts to count instead of sum. That is not a bug. In fact, it is an audit finding which highlights the fact that in that column, data is not consistent. So this is a very simple way of checking quality of numeric columns. But that's not all. Let's take some more complicated data and see how this works. At this point of time, the data looks good, but, but there are hundreds of rows of data and I'm not going to scroll down to check the quality. Here is a nice innovative new method of using pivot table for data quality audit. Let's create a pivot table and this time I'm not going to work on the values area. I'm going to put a column in the rows area. What does this do? It goes through the actual column, every cell, and then finds the unique values from that column and puts them in different rows. The column which is drag drop here is sorted in the natural order. If it's if it is text, it will be in alphabetical order. If it is number, it will be in ascending order and so on. But notice that here, apart from having the countries in alphabetical order, it has something else there. On the top, it has number, which shouldn't be there at all. And then there is some kind of logical true here. There is an error, there is a date and there is a blank. This is how when you drag drop a field into row area and look at the top or bottom portion, you can quickly check quality of data. Now we know that there are some problems there, but there is one more piece of information which is important. How many times have these mistakes happened? If it's a one-off mistake, you may ignore it. If it has happened too many times, you need to take corrective action. Now how do we do that? We need to put something in the values area which will get counted. We know that numeric column, it does a sum, but in this case, we want a count. So naturally, you will feel like dragging and dropping country column here, which works in most cases, but the blank section does not show a number. Now, why is this happening? Because pivot table is using the count function internally. And as you know, count function does not count blank cells. What does that mean? I can't use the country column to count the number of empty cells in the country column. Okay, so we remove it. Now we need to add some other column for counting. The problem is, I am not sure which column has no empty cells in it. Because if a column has empty cells in it, my count itself is going to go wrong. And I don't want to waste time checking which column is suitable for counting. So here is a best practice you should learn. Whenever we get data, we should add a column, our own column, and let's call that column counter. Now we know that this column is only going to be used for counting things. And because of that, we want to make sure one drag drop into value area guaranteed gives me count. 
That means I don't want a number here. I want text. Which text you put here doesn't matter because we are just counting it. We just want to make sure not a single cell is empty. So I'm going to choose a text called A. Now the problem is it went into the first cell and I have to copy that across the range, which is also painful. Because this is a table, we can make use of the facility of table where if you put a formula, then table copies the formula automatically without worrying about empty cells in the adjacent columns. So that's how we got our counter column. Now we refresh the pivot table and then use the counter column for counting and that tells us that there are 13 blank cells. Whether you want to take any action or not depends on the business situation. Now we are going to keep the counter column constant and just change to another column. This column seems to be clean, so we remove it. In this case, it looks okay, but don't be very sure till you see the bottom portion as well. So after numbers, there is text, there is date, and of course, blanks. Dates can be very tricky. Unless all the dates are correctly specified, grouping features of Excel pivot table do not work. So it's very important to audit date columns. So I hope you got the idea. Like this, when you get raw data, before we start analyzing it, you must put one column at a time into row area and look at the top and bottom to check the quality of the data. Although this may sound like an extra step, it is absolutely worth the time and effort we are spending on it because unless you are sure that your data is accurate, you cannot be sure that your output or analysis or reports are accurate.